Hi everyone, thanks for joining me. I'm Lizzie Allen and today we're in my quilt room. I've been a long arm quilter for more than 10 years and today I'd like to share some of the things I've learned along the way. Like most of us who patchwork and quilt, uh, we always looked at a double wedding ring quilt and went, mm, I want to do one of those one day. It's on most quilters bucket lists. I hope this will be a fun class to get you started on your own journey to doing your own double wedding ring quilt. So let's begin. The pattern. There are some really great resources out there for the double wedding ring pattern. So I decided to try the pattern by So Kind of Wonderful, the Metro Rings. It's the big quilt that you see on the wall behind me. I actually made that for my daughter's wedding present. Um, I love the instructions, they're easy to follow. The strip pace, pacing makes this such an easy quilt to put together. They have some really great uh, video tutorials which can be found on YouTube to help you get your quilt top constructed. You will need to purchase her uh, quick curve ruler but this ruler is used in about 25 of her quilts so it's good value. She also brings out a line of long arm rulers to match the quick curve ruler. Most quilters usually prefer to press the seam allowances to one side rather than pressing open as this will help to strengthen the seam. I don't always think that this is a must. Most of us like to press to one side so that when we piece it, it achieves perfectly matched seams. Mm. For me, pressing the seams open or pressing to the side truly depends on my project. In this project, I've done a little of both. All the stripped piecing for the arcs, I press to the side. When I started to construct the curved set ins, triangles, I decided to press these seams to the side and on the outer edge open. I want to make the piece section stand out and it gives our background far more definition. There is no bulk to one side of the background fabric. The quilt top is much flatter. I've always made sure that the stitch length is 1.5, so it's okay, my seams are nice and truly strong, they're not going to pull apart. And I, and truly, it is much easier to quilt. There is no bulk in the seams, the quilting looks so much better. Ditching is so much easier. I'm literally stitching right in the ditch. How I mark my quilt. I like to use the Blue Water Soluble Pens. These are probably one of my favourites for markings on light coloured quilt tops. It's really easy to remove. I use a spray bottle of water, about a cup, 250ml, with a heat teaspoon of baking soda. Just mix it really, really well. I usually wait until the end of my quilting project and then what I do is use the spray bottle and I just spray the whole quilt top surface. Apparently it changes the pH of the ink so it just disappears. Because I also starch the fabric, it helps the ink sit on top of the surface rather than in it. One thing I will say, it's really important that we uh, don't iron the markings before we remove them. Apparently it can set them. I've never had any problems, but they it's out there and they say, girls don't iron the blue water soluble. They're readily available. I've used many, many brands on the market and they're easy to see. So that's how I, I mark the quilt. And we will be marking it because we're going to take the same integral design from here in the center and we're going to create a lovely border out here. So we'll use the blue water soluble pens to mark.
Let's get started. The first thing I need to do is turn on my machine, but make sure that we don't have the power onto the QCT5 carriage. I need to release the belts on the frame. This will make the machine nice and free while I'm working. Now, I've put on my ruler base. It's essential because we will be doing ruler work. I put on my horizontal channel lock and I basted the batting to the backing. Now, this was really important to me because I want the quilt top to go on nice and square. So, once that was basted, it then allowed me to bring this quilt top up to this basting line that I'd created. Now, working from the center, I literally based from the center towards the right, making sure that my quilt top is nice and even across this basted line. Then come back and I repeat it going from the center towards the left. Now I know that the quilt top's going on nice and straight. When I'm happy with that, I can base down the left hand side of the quilt, then the right hand side of the quilt. Once that is completed, it's really great because I just pop my quilt grip clamps on the side of my quilt and I use the quilt clips at the front because I'm floating the top. Now, just make sure girls that you're not quilting too tight. We like the surface to be nice and soft. It's much easier. It doesn't vibrate while we're working. I've also taken the time to change my foot to the ruler foot. I have the great little four piece hobbing foot set. I got a standard hobbing foot, a ruler foot, the micro stippling foot and the open toe foot. That's kind of my favorite. It's the visibility uh, for going around applique. It's amazing. Takes a couple of minutes. I just use the three mil wrench. They come with a great set of instructions. It's quick and easy to do. And because we're going to be doing ruler work, it kind of is essential because it's been designed that the foot's a little higher. So our rulers nest perfectly when we're going around our designs to ditch them. So I've gone ahead and I've done that and we're ready to go. Okay. So now you can see I've gone ahead and I've done all the ditching. And I can hear you all groan and say, oh, it's mind-numbingly boring. It really is essential that this is the first step. Put your favorite music on, get your ruler out. If you're really worried, try using a super fine thread. This one's the Micro Quilter by Superior Threads. Thread up your machine and have a go. It's one of the most important things that we can do. It truly prevents the fabric from distorting and rippling. It also means that when we go to place our gorgeous quilting designs in the arcs, they will be perfect. So put that music on, grab your ruler and have a go. Do not stop. It's okay if you occasionally get one or two stitches that didn't quite meet the ditch and they're on your patchwork. We tend to see that and we stop ourselves and we think, oh, it's a mistake. Trust me, when we have finished the overall quilting, it's going to be stunning. Keep going, girls. Okay, so let the fun begin. So this was the original uh, Metro Rings quilt that I did for my daughter's wedding. I loved the ease of the design and the construction of the Metro Rings, but it's a modern take and it didn't have borders. So what I decided to do is get a little bit creative and I added a 10 inch border. Then I decided I wanted digital designs to use QCT5 to place inside the melons and the center borders. Now, I love the pebbles because they really do pop on the background. So that's the pebbles there. But, oh, I can't quilt without using a feather. 
So basically I decided I wanted to use both. Then what I wanted to do was give it that little bit of a vintage twist. So I put on the 10 inch border and we have these great quilting machines. So I decided, well, why not quilt the borders, incorporate the designs and allow them to pop. And I will show you how we put on the curved bias and the rick rack. So now for placing the designs on our bed runner. Okay, so I want to start stitching out my border because we added a 10 inch border to the Metro Rings bed runner. So what I've done is these blocks were originally nine inch so it makes it really easy and these are four inch so what i've done is using my blue water soluble pen and i hope you can see the markings it's a little hard i've turned the lights off for us so that we could see what i've done is i've basically using the, my little ruler and my blue water soluble pen i've perfectly lined up the patchwork block with the border and then I've literally just drawn on the blue water soluble line. That now allows me to tell the QCT5 where I want to place the design. Now I know that these blocks finish size were 9 inch so it's really quite easy to just come from this point here and this point here and make sure that I've got my original patchwork line here so the seam is nice and square and I can just do these markings. Now don't stress it, the design will stitch in the arc although we're actually plotting a square. Trust me, it's going to look amazing. So now all the markings are complete across the top row of the border, we'll start doing our design. To mix it up a little, I think I might do um, a pebble, a feather, a pebble, a feather, and then we'll see how it goes down. If I do every other, it should create its own little pattern as we go along. Okay girls, so it's really exciting. We've got ready to stitch out our first design. So remember that um, we were using the machine in free motion. So I've gone ahead and I've tightened up my belts on my frame and on the carriage. Now the first thing that we need to do is I've gone ahead and I've opened my software and following the prompts on the screen, I've gone ahead and I've set the safe area. Now I previously imported my designs in there in the batch folder. Now what you'll see is I've set it on four point, stretch to fit. Now I'm gonna go over here to my margins. Now I'm gonna keep my little margin lock locked and I'm gonna set my design to be a quarter inside the margins that I set. Now, one of the first things I need to do is select markings. Okay, there are no markings to sew because I actually need to come over here to my toolbox and select the marking tool. Now, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move my machine to where I'd like the first marking to be. So, I've got my needle in position and I come up and I select add mark. Then I'm going to gently move my machine about an inch and a half down and start selecting the second markings. Third, fourth, fifth, sixth, down into the point on the block. Now you see that the I've now created the first arc. So now I'm going to go up about an inch select a new marking, add another one, add another one, add, add, add. Okay, so 
I'm actually happy I've made all my markings. So now I just select go back to placement on my screen. Now there's no need to rotate the design. So this is in the power placement mode. So now it's as easy as moving my machine to my first mark and I'm going to select place. Move to my second mark go back to my screen and place then down here okay we're looking good and then my last marking now you'll actually see when we come back to the screen that if you look closely you can see my marking but my margins haven't quite worked so let's see if I just bring this in a little okay so I'm now altering my margins. Uh, no, I'll just increase that. Okay, now I'm really happy with that. So I will use that margin on all the blocks. Now, once again, I've got stretch to fit showing and now I'm ready to quilt. So you'll see that it's now connecting to the system. The machine has transferred to quilt motion and I'm ready to sew. So now, this is how I do it. There's not a right or a wrong, but I'm gonna to go to toolbox and I'm gonna go move, select move to start. You'll see that the machine now moves to the position. Oh, please, we can't rush up. Please ensure the needle is up. Just select okay. The machine is moving down to my first placement. Now, the red and green denote on the screen the stop and start, so I can go toolbox and I can just do a single stitch. This is important for me because I like to bring up the bobbin thread, so I just slide it underneath the hobbing foot and I have my bobbin thread. Now, it's as easy as let's select sew. Please ensure the needle is up. She's very bossy, but it's nice to be safe. Hit OK. All right, here we go. Started, but remember this is where our imaginary arc would be on the other side of the design. Okay, so now our machine has finished stitching the design. I am thrilled. The other thing I'll let you know is if you look down here at my screen, I actually have it on 10 stitches per inch. 
it means that when the pebbles stitch out, they stitch out really nice and round. So now I'll quickly show you how I deal with the thread. I take the needle thread with one hand, I bring the machine forward and I do a nice um, needle down, needle up, bring up the bobbin thread and I just snip that. Now because I previously set in my software for it to do a couple of tie off stitches, I don't have to tie it. So I really like to use these and I don't know whether you can see that but that's a lovely open ended needle and it's really quite simple. I just place the needle down onto the thread, snap it in and then just come over and bury that into my quilt soft surface give it a gentle tug pull those threads firm and just snip it and then of course I come back and I got that one a little caught which is what I didn't want to do so I'll just tidy that up do exactly the same thing snip that and bury the thread and I'll just cut that excess off bring it through give it a little tug and look at that girls we have our first block and it's stitched out perfectly we'll go ahead and place some more Okay girls, so now we're back to, we're going to place the corner design. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to my toolbox and I'm going to hit marking tool and I'm going to go remove all. And you'll see that the original markings for the first block I did have disappeared. So on the corner of the quilt, I only actually have one arc to actually worry about. So I'll go ahead and I'll start the marking at my first point and then I'll select add mark, then come down, add another mark, add another mark. Now my markings, they vary to about an inch, inch and a half apart just so that I can see them on the screen. All right, so when we look back at our screen, we can actually see the marking over here. So now I'm just gonna go back to placement and we've still got our original settings of four point and stretch. So now let's go and place the block. So I'm in my first position, so I'll tap it to register it come to my second point I've now registered the second move up to the top here add my mark add my mark and when we look at the screen we can see that we've got the block all placed and I'm really happy with the placement and the marking here on the screen so we're very good to go so now I'll just hit the quilt and software will open up onto our sew screen and I'm just going to now I'm moving my machine because I can see that the start and stop is here so I'm just going to move it down here to where I know it's going to start select my toolbox uh, go move to start safety message okay I'm going to just use the toolbox to bring up a single stitch. Now I have my bobbin and of course it's as easy as select sew now so we'll go ahead and select sew. Stitch out until it's 
Okay, girls, so we've done all the big blocks. Now we're going to do our lovely little set in squares. So I've opened my batch folder, I've selected the pattern and brought it in. So this one's really basic, so I'm just going to move to the first point on my quilt and anchor it down, move to the second point and keep tapping to select and select. Now, the same thing, I'm going to come back up here to my margins and I'm going to set my margins in to be the same. So I'm really happy with that. So I'll make sure that that margin is the same on all of the blocks. So now I'll go, I'll just check that with the fit and I can see that that's, that's really what I want. And then I'll just go uh, quilt and let's, the machine has gone over. So now all I have to do is, I'm going to show you how I check. I'm going to select the sew button. And of course she's going to be very bossy and say to me, please ensure the needle is up. Just select OK. Machine was going to move to our start position. Now I've got the thread between my two thumbs. It's going to do a single stitch. And then I'm just going to slide underneath and I got it without having to do needle up, needle down to bring up my bobbin. I'll just hold my thread and away we go. We're actually stitching out our design. make sure that I don't get my threads caught up. Stopping. We're finished and I'm going to go back to my pattern placement and what I'm going to select is ditch. So now um, what I want to do is I want it to, to stitch. No, it's because it would stitch this line. I want to stitch markings. So, okay, I'm going to go to my marking tool and I'm going to go to the corner of my block and I'm going to select add mark and a mark and a mark add a mark and then come back and add the mark. Now I just actually added a mark and I'm not actually happy with it so I just go remove last and I can just gently tweak my machine to where I want. No, remove, add, remove. Let's just see if we can get that right. Oh, hang on. It's the blind leading the blind here. Okay. We should be able to, yeah, there we go. So I've added my markings there. Now I'm really happy. Now what I'm going to do is go back to placement and I'm going to unselect ditch, select markings, and I'm going to ask it to sort the markings. So I'm now going to select sew because my sew screen is coming up. And that, girls, is for all of us who don't want to get the ruler out and ditch. Please ensure the needle is up. 
I'm going to do the same thing, just literally got the thread between my two fingers, then quickly slide underneath and just doing my lock stitches. And look at that girls, it's doing a beautiful job of ditching that block. I'm very happy with that. Okay, now I'll just go ahead and continue to bury my threads once she's finished locking off the stitches. So I'll repeat that now for all the corner stones. Okay, so now I'm ready to place the designs in the melon. Now, what I noticed was that I used my marking tool and I marked the inside of the actual melon. That was fine. And what I did is I played around with a lot of the options and there isn't a right or a wrong, but this is the one that I found really worked for me. I put it on point and I then selected stretch to fit and I set my margins at quarter inch inside. But one thing I found was I was using these original points on my quilt top to mark the length and although the design was placing perfectly I found all of a sudden my pebbles weren't round like here they became little ovals although they were fitting inside the design really quite nicely so I decided to play with it and what I discovered was using my ruler I've come in and I've used I've lined it up on the block and I've come in and I've marked a half inch line I've done exactly the same on the other end then using my seam here I then place my ruler and I've made sure I've made a mark here 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 and here so now what I have is I've got easy placement of the design it's literally a rectangle so I'll go up to the screen and I'll show you what I mean so up here on my screen you can see that I've already placed the block and we're on one point and we're stretch you'll see that I've set my margins over here and there's the melon. Now you will see, according to the markings, you can tell that I really have set that rectangle, that half inch inside. But I love the way that looks. It now looks balanced inside the, the melon. Now, one of the things I wanna show you is, if you find that you're, now I've actually got my screen up here. I've actually got it on about 75% so I could see what I was doing. If you plot it and you find that your design is a little off, see what I'm doing here? I'm just using the degree for rotation and I'm just tapping that and I'm just placing it back where it was. So you don't have to re-plot it every time to get it right. Just play with your degree. Now I'm only I was only doing it one degree at a time. Now I'm really, really happy with that. So I can just go ahead now and select the quilt button. We're connecting down to my machine. And of course I just hit the sew button and I'll show you a melon in a minute. that they had here in these ditchings so that we're all balanced so I did that free motion by hand so now what I'm ready to do is show you how I'm going to have a bit of fun doing these borders the piano key borders now I will tell you I always use the blue water soluble pen even when I mark these lines because I find it's a lot easier to tell your brain where we're going and what we're doing. It means that I have a path and I'm set on it. So you look up at the screen and you see the last design that I have there is actually the melons. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to do some add markings. So what I'm going to do is the first thing I'm going to do is go to our toolbox and hit marking tool and now I'm going to start adding some marks so I'll add a mark and 
I'll come down and I'll add a mark and I'll jiggle it across a little, add a mark and come back up. If you're actually having trouble seeing whether your piano keys are far enough apart, just increase your screen and then come over. I'm actually quite happy with that. I'll just have to come back. Now we can all see what I'm doing. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to continue to come along and I'll continue to add marks. It's a really, really fast and easy way for us to add the markings on our quilt. And I'll just zoom out a little bit because I went way too far. Across and a mark. Wiggle across and another one. Come up. And let's now you can do do it in segments, which is what I've been doing. I'm quite happy to do that. And I'm going to go right across the border and it's a really easy way of doing the piano keys rather than taking the machine out of automation and ditching them. Takes the fear factor out. Just do a couple of more so that you get the whole idea of what we're doing. Now don't panic, I know it looks a little crazy on the screen, trust me, they stitch beautifully. So, okay, nearly there. I actually just might remove that last one for some reason I wasn't quite straight enough that's better get this right this is what I love about the program it's much easier than unpicking girls if you don't like it just simply remove that last mark ah. oh, now I've confused myself okay okay I'm happy with that. So now, know that the pattern is on, so that means it would stitch the pattern. So I need to deselect that, and I want to select markings, and then I'm going to select quilt. The pattern is, yes, it's connecting, because really what I only want it to do is actually stitch the markings. So now I'm going to move over to where I know the machine's going to start. And once again, holding the thread, I'm going to select so, come down, and it does look better in blue. <laughs> okay, pull the bobbin, just hold that while she does the lock stitches. Successfully stitching our markings and we're doing piano keys across our border. Now I'm really happy with that. It looks horrible on the screen um, and yet it's sewing really nicely for me. So 
when I finish marking and stitching all the borders, we'll come back and we'll mark it ready to do our lovely curved binding. Okay, so let's have a little fun and we're going to do the corner so that I can show you how I place that. So um, we're going to come along and we're going to do these. So the first thing I need to do is up on the screen, I'm going to do remove all because I want those markings removed. Now I'm going to start and let's mark the corner at a point, come down. Now, this is different because I'm placing a point here, placing a point here. So I'm going to add point, come across, add a point, wiggle it up, add, come across, add a point, and then come up here. So it's still piano keys, but we've made the border just a little bit more interesting by drawing that 45 line down the center and getting it to turn the corner and a mark come up at a mark just enlarged it so that you could see it on the screen. So that's what we're going to create to actually stitch the markings on the corner. So when I'm happy, I'll continue doing all the markings. I'll just hit Okay girls, so I'm at the exciting part. All the quilting's done and I'm really happy. But I wanted to add an extra element to the quilt so what I've done is I've decided to put a sculpt border on it. Now, what it's really quite easy to do this. Using the patchwork as a guide, what I've done is I've used my curvet ruler and basically I've lined up this center line here with the center line here of the quilting. And I've just lined it up and I've gone across and I've drawn with a blue water soluble pen all the arcs and I'm really happy because these arcs the degree of the arc matches the degree in our patchwork and then I've come across and I've moved over and I've done used the quilting design here found the center registration and done that side done the same on this side here now to find this curve it was really easy I went look at that it works perfectly so that's what I chose to do um, now for me it, I would never ever cut this and then stitch on the binding so what I do first is I stitch this line here so that I'm really really happy and then I cut it back a quarter of an inch so it would be I would cut this at a quarter inch now what I've done is to make it look balanced although I added a 10 inch border I've come down from the top here one and a quarter inches and I've drawn this blue water soluble line to square it all up and then basically just used my ruler and I've drawn all my arcs on so I'm going to happily quilt that line in and then the exciting bit is I'll take it off the frame and I'll show you how I put the binding on. Okay, so I carefully cut back a quarter inch to the original stitch line that I did while it was still on the quilting frame. 
Now, I always like to add an extra element to binding. It's just something that I've always done. So this is eight mil rickrack, and I've just placed it on the edge there, and it's going to be a peeper on my binding. So I cut six strips across the width of the fabric at two and a half inch, and yes, I heavily starched again because I find that it helps bond the two pieces of fabric together. Uh, then, yet again, I have actually opened, I've ironed all my seams open on my binding. And it's really important when I'm doing something curved so I don't end up with a bulk in one position. So, let's get, I'll start off, I leave a big tail when I start stitching. So, I have my quarter inch foot on at the moment and I'll show you what happens when we get to a, a point of a curve so I'll just pop it down here and I'm going to start stitching and really what I do is I actually bring the quilt around so that really I'm sewing a straight not actually a curve and so I've got one hand on the top, one hand here on the bottom, and I'm just going to bring that round, just sewing a quarter inch, and you just gently ease it in. For me, I love the binding. It means that it's nearly going to be time to just sit down with needle and thread and enjoy the hand stitching. It's therapeutic. So to stitch in here, so this is, I'll just straighten this up. This is my curve. So that I stitch that basically straight and because I want the fabric to give, I'm going to take my scissors and I'm just going to clip that point and I'm about a mil away from my stitching. And then what that does is it just allows the fabric to ease because what I want to do is I want to sew my binding on straight. That way I don't end up with too much fabric bulk when I turn it into the point and I'll get the, the binding will turn beautifully into the curve. So I'll just show you. So, this allows me to stitch it as though it was straight. And I'll just stitch a little bit further. And I will take it out from under the needle. And show you what I mean. So when I let go, that has gone back. So when I now turn this over, and um, I go to the wrong side, you'll see that that's the little nick that I made. So it didn't quite go into the point, which is exactly what I want. So when I bring this over, I will actually hand stitch it down like that. And the fabric will gently ease and take itself into the curve, creating a perfect binding. Well, the binding's all done. I finally finished it and it's on my spare bed. I hope this inspires you on your own journey to make your own double wedding ring quilt. Thanks for watching.